This is awkward, isn't it? How do you get over the awkwardness? Also, I'm sweating so much already. Hello, everyone. My name is Baxter Blank, and I make videos about things that are strange, silly, spooky, suspicious, or just plain interesting. I realize that's pretty broad, but if any of that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified every time I make a new video. So the other day I went to a Barnes & Noble and I picked up some puzzles. So I figured I would uh, show you what I got and talk a little bit about each item. Let's go. So the first thing I got was this um, silkworm puzzle by True Genius. As you can see, it's just a couple of metal curly cues. It says the goal is to disconnect the two pieces, then find a way to link them back together. And the difficulty level is three out of five. And on the side it says, legend holds that silk was developed under an ancient Chinese empress more than 5,000 years ago. The intricately woven luxury fabric became so important to the Chinese economy that even mentioning that silk came from silkworms was punishable by death. Our puzzle dares you to unthread the metal silkworms, unraveling the history of Imperial China's true genius. So all these puzzles kind of have like an ancient civilization theme. I feel like the connections are sort of tenuous at best. I guess that kind of looks like a worm or a couple worms. Uh, but I, I'm kind of a sucker for, you know, a nice aesthetic. And I feel like this uh, series of puzzles has a cool aesthetic. Um, so this one obviously is uh, themed, I guess, after ancient China. So it's got different uh, Chinese characters. That should be interesting. Like I said, it's a three out of five, so I'm hoping it's not too difficult, but we'll see. The next puzzle uh, is called Appian Way. Um, it's by the same company, True Genius, and um, it's in the same kind of series of puzzles. And this one is actually rated a four out of five, so a little bit more difficult. Ooh, I keep hitting the camera thing. Um, let's see, it says, the Romans used an extensive network of roads to maintain their vast empire. Scholars credit the Appian Way with actually winning the war by allowing rapid transport of Roman troops and supplies. This puzzle is modeled after the interlocking stones of the roads that signified the Romans' true genius. And the goal is to untangle the cube, then twist the pieces back into a cube again. And it's got little... I guess Roman themed symbols. Obviously this is Roman themed. This next one is a little bit different. It's not really a puzzle as much as it is a mystery game. It's called Detective Nightmare in the Mirror. Uh, and it's got a picture, obviously, I guess you can see, but it's a picture of a woman uh, looking into a shattered mirror. The cool thing is it's one to six players, so you can actually play this game by yourself. It says, a mystery in a deck of cards, a case for true detectives. Nightmare in the Mirror is an investigation game for a group of friends, but also playable solo. Danielle Dove was kidnapped. Thankfully, she is a resourceful girl and managed to somehow ask for help. But you must act quickly if you want to save her. Collect the clues, newspaper clippings, pictures, witness statements, investigate, and come up with plausible theories. Can you put the evidence together to solve the mystery? So it's like a deck of cards, and I'm guessing they have clues on them. Let's see if I can solve that as well. The next one is a uh, another similar kind of game that can be played solo. Uh, I guess the series is called Exit the Game, and this one is called The Abandoned Cabin. Can you solve the riddles to escape the cabin? This one is about midway between novice and expert. 
I wonder, does the detective have a difficulty rating? This one does not seem to come with a difficulty rating. After your car breaks down, you are looking for shelter for the night. Luckily, you find an abandoned cabin in the woods near the road. But the next morning, the door is locked. Iron bars on the windows prevent you from escaping. You discover a book and a strange disc. And it says, an escape room for the home. Unforgettable, unique gaming experience. Solve all the puzzles as fast as you can. Can you manage to escape the cabin? And it's got one decoder disc, 86 cards, three strange items, <laughs> whatever that means, uh, one book, and one rule book. And then it comes with a little warning. This game can only be played once. To solve the riddles, you will have to write on, fold, and cut the game materials. This makes it possible to have especially diverse riddles. The paper and cardboard com components are recyclable. So that's that. Next up, I've got another one from the True Genius uh, series. This one is called Sea Chest, and it is a difficulty level of three out of four. Are the other ones rated out of four? No, these small ones are rated out of five. But this one is only rated out of four, which I find interesting. It's got little illustrations of uh, what I guess would be Greek vessels. And uh, I don't know what language that is. Maybe it's Greek. It doesn't really look like Greek to me, but I guess I don't really know too much about the Greek alphabet. Uh, again, it's called Sea Chest. Uh, it says, the goal is manipulate the hidden panels and components of the box until it opens, revealing the chamber within. It says, early civilizations shaped our world by solving puzzles. Uh, if you say so. Faced with a problem, they were able to visualize and execute a creative solution with few resources. Okay, fair enough. These brilliant innovations are the foundations of our modern society and mark and the mark of a true genius. The Vikings. Oh, I see. These are maybe Viking symbols. I don't know why I thought this was a Greek themed puzzle, but it's not. The Vikings were known for their long voyagers. They're long. They're just very long people. They're very long, uh, they're long, should be voyages, and on the move lifestyle. So it is no surprise that they took great care in the protection and storage of their belongings. The Master Mirror and Oseberg chests were the most well-known style of chests that were used during these voyages. These sea chests carried many of their precious belongings, such as smithing and woodworking tools. Vikings were masters of the sea and land, protecting their belongings as they ventured into the unknown. <laughs> Only a true genius could unlock these chests to uncover the valuables inside, can you? Ah, I see, this is a Norse-themed puzzle. We will see if I can solve this one. And then the last one I got is called the Pagoda. And it's, again, it's uh, ancient Chinese themed, I believe. And this one's rated out of five again, so I'm not really sure what's going on with their difficulty ratings, but anyway. Chinese pagodas are a traditional and iconic part of ancient Chinese architecture. Since the fifth century AD, Chinese pagodas have been praised for the spectacular views which they are built to offer and many famous poems in Chinese history attest to the marvel of climbing to the top of a pagoda. The 11th century Pagoda of Fugong Temple in China's Shangxi province, I apologize for the pronunciation, is the oldest surviving wooden pagoda in China. Its nine stories offer a spectacular view stretching out over 20 miles on a clear day. Solving this puzzle will require all of the foresight and true genius used by the ancient Chinese architects to create these majestic structures. The goal is to turn the layers and tilt the pagoda to move the colored balls until each column of balls 
is the same color. So right now it doesn't seem like that would be that difficult, but maybe you're supposed to, I feel like these come pre-solved and you're supposed to like mess them up and then solve them, maybe. I'm not sure, but that's, uh, that's the last one that I got. So I hope you'll join me as I try to solve these puzzles. Uh, if you liked this video, go ahead and give it a like and leave me a comment. Um, or don't, I guess. Maybe just don't. No, you can, <laughs> you can if you want to. Nailed it. Take care. Until next time, I'm Baxter Blair. And next time, I will still be Baxter Blank. <laughs>